This video is going to help you in describing the directions of vectors, especially when we're trying to use other vectors or maybe reference lines to describe these directions. So you should be able to describe the direction of a vector or calculate the, the direction of the angle really of a vector with reference to other vectors after watching this video. So before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that we live in a three dimensional world. And so we really should be able to describe vectors in three dimensions. So far, you've really only seen them in two dimensions. You've only seen them in what we call the plane of the board. And a plane is a two dimensional space. And like if you're looking at your computer screen right now, that is a plane. And the vectors that you're seeing, a lot of these vectors that I've just drawn as arrows are being expressed in this two dimensional plane. So some phrases that we use to describe a two dimensional plane are things like up and down and left and right. So if you were the observer right now looking at this two dimensional plane that I've drawn, you could use those words like up and down and left and right to describe a general direction. So those phrases, they really, they describe like, um, they're very specific that left and right is like, like horizontally pointing left and right and up and down point vertically up or down. If we add a third dimension to this picture, the third dimension does what we call it comes out of the board or goes into the board. So just like up and down describe the vertical dimension, left and right describe a horizontal dimension. The phrases out of the board and into the board describe this third dimension. So this, this uh, diagram here can help you understand what I mean when I'm saying the board or when I say into the board or out of the board. Really imagine you're looking at the, your computer screen or like or even like a whiteboard if we were in class. That is the board. So if you can imagine like an arrow coming out of your computer screen and pointing like right at your face, that would be an arrow that is coming out of the board. Or if there was an arrow like shooting into your computer screen, then that is the direction defined as into the board. And that's describing this third dimension. And I'll admit it's really difficult to draw three dimensions on a two dimensional plane. So like on homework or your exams and stuff like that, it's really hard to describe these things accurately and clearly. So a lot of times I kind of default to only doing stuff in two dimensions. But we will describe a third dimension. We'll do it kind of a little bit more generally um, using these phrases into the board or out of the board. I want you to recognize that this exists and we are going to use them in a few in a little bit later when we talk about some other vector operations. So let's go back to 2D right now. Let's go back to two dimensions in the two dimensional plane of the board or you can think of anytime I say the board think of your computer screen the two dimensional plane of your computer screen we can vaguely describe directions with phrases like up, down, left, right. It doesn't exactly tell us where something is, but it gives us a general direction. So those arrows right there, they describe the directions up, down, left, and right. Like I said, left and right defines a horizontal line, either going one way on the horizontal line or going the other way on the horizontal line. Up and down describe the vertical direction, um, you know, up, up the vertical line or down the vertical line. Of course, though, um, things don't necessarily fall along these vertical or horizontal lines. They might be some combination of, of, of these directions. So you might use phrases like up and to the right, down and to the left, stuff like that. You're combining these directions to show um, vectors that don't necessarily fall straight along horizontal or vertical lines. You'll notice here, though, that these arrows and these, direct, these ways of describing these arrows is pretty general because I could very easily draw this arrow right here. That is also pointing up and to the right. So I have two vectors that are both pointing up and to the right. So it's just not very specific. We wanna give specific directions about how these vectors are pointing. It's just not good enough um, to say up and to the right. We really, we need some numbers here to quantify how these things are pointing. So in order to do that, we generally use some kind of reference point or a reference line to define some directions. Um, and so in the two dimensional plane of the board that we're gonna be working in a lot, it's generally the convention to use horizontal or vertical lines to place those lines at the tail of your vector 
and to describe the angles relative to those lines. Remember that the um, vertical lines and horizontal lines are by definition of those phrases 90 degrees to each other. Horizontal is perpendicular to vertical. So let's try to use that logic here and let's try to answer a question. Um, uh, vector A is shown below in two different figures. It's relative to a horizontal line in one figure and it's relative to a vertical line in the other figure. Notice that vector A is the same. It's vector A it has a certain length, it has a certain direction. We've just chosen to try to describe that direction. In one sense, we're describing it relative to a horizontal line. In the other sense, we're describing its direction relative to a vertical line. So how we describe the direction of this vector might change, but the vector is what it is. Vector A looks exactly how you see it in these figures, and now we just need to choose how the best way we want to describe this vector. So in this um, left-hand figure, I see that vector A has, makes it 30 degree, 30 degree angle with that horizontal line. <clears throat> and so if we want to solve for that larger angle in this picture, remember that all lines are 180 degrees. And so to figure out that big angle right there, we would just need to do 180 minus 30, and that would give us 50 degrees. So that big angle right there, 50, oh, sorry, 150 degrees. I mean, 50 was too small. 150 degrees for that larger angle, just using the fact that a line is 180 degrees. Okay, now when we look at vector A, let's say that we wanted to reference this vector um, with reference to a vertical line. Well, we know that vector A made a 30 degree angle with a horizontal line. So I'm just gonna redraw that horizontal line here. And I know that it made a 30 degree angle right there. So let's try to solve for this angle right here. I know that, like I said, horizontal lines and vertical lines are 90 degrees from each other. So I know that that angle right there must be 90 minus 30 degrees. And that gives us 60 degrees. So that angle right there is 60. All right, now let's try to find the other angle that's um, labeled with a question mark in this figure. Let's try to find that one. Let's fall back on that same logic that a straight line makes 180 degrees. So this vertical line is making 180 degrees. And so if that angle we just figured out was 60 degrees, then this one is 180 degrees minus that 60 degrees. And so I can see that this big angle right here is 120 degrees. All right, so that's, that's how I would do it to figure out all those angles. There are other methods of, of do, using geometry and rules of geometry to figure it out. So you may have gone a different route, but you should still get those same answers. The other way of describing directions might not be with relative uh, in relation to horizontal or vertical lines. It could be relative to a different vector. And so it's very common to use what we call a referenced vector, something that we know the direction of, and then just use that as like, um, just like a reference point to say that this vector is so many degrees away from that one, and just using that same reference vector over and over again to define other vectors. And whenever we do this, we always want to place our vectors tail to tail. So let's try an example problem here. I have two vectors, A and B, and they are both defined with reference to reference vector D. So vector, reference vector D is shown in both of these figures and A and B are just um, drawn and the angles are defined relative to vector D. And we wanna figure out, what we care about actually, is the smallest angle between vectors A and B when they are placed tail to tail. So let's use this, these pictures here. <clears throat> what I would do, is translate, I'm gonna translate vector B so that it is literally tail to tail with vector A. So you're always allowed to pick up a vector and move it as long as you don't change its direction or length. I'm gonna do my best to try to draw. Here's vector B. And again, it was 150 degrees away from reference vector D, which is already drawn in this figure. So I know that this angle right here is 150 degrees. So we're looking for the smallest angle between vectors A and B. I can see that 70 plus 150, that would be this, this big angle right here. 
70 plus 150 is 220. Is that the smallest angle between these two vectors? I don't think so. Because even just by looking at this diagram, I'm pretty sure this other angle right here, this one looks smaller than that. And so you can use the geometry rule that a circle is 360 degrees. And so we could make a full circle here. I could say that 360 degrees minus this 220 degrees, that would be what's left over to be the smaller angle between A and B. And so 360 minus 220, 140 degrees. And that, what I would say is the correct answer. That's the smallest angle between, between vectors A and B. And we did it using that reference vector D to try to just basically to set a reference point in order to define all this stuff in our figures. All right, and that's all I really wanted to talk about, just using different reference points and just kind of determining angles using geometry to help you figure out those angles.